This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. This is the kind of news that I hate reporting, but in cases like this, I just don't have much of a choice. We have news of another group of women religious that Francis and his coterie running apostate Rome have decided to smash to pieces. A group of women religious have been disbanded here in the United States, and the religious in question have been stunned into silence. They've said nothing about it publicly, and they honestly can't believe that this has happened to them. The reasoning behind it will leave you quite upset, so fair warning. This case shows us perfectly that what Francis is up to is nothing short of waging war on the traditional faith, and war on anything that looks remotely traditional. Because here's the thing, this group of women religious aren't militant trads. Let's get into this unfortunate story. And to frame it, we're gonna to have to do what we do from time to time, which is check in with Paca Papa Francis, who was clearly feeling the exuberance of participating in his Paca Mama 2.0 ritual to whatever demon that goes by the name of Western grandmother is. When Francis speaks in an airplane press conference, you know whatever he's up to is not good. In his press conference returning from Canada to his trip to Italy, Francis was speaking in a normal, not terribly animated way about his Canadian trip. It was business as usual. Then he found an opportunity to slam traditionalists, and he positively lit up. He got animated. It was as if someone handed him a Red Bull. From the Vatican.va transcript of his statement, we get this definition of tradition as progress. These are the words of Francis. Quote, I think this is very clear. A church that does not develop its thinking in an ecclesial sense is a church that is going backward. This is today's problem, and many who call themselves traditional. No, no, they are not traditional. They are people looking to the past, going backward without roots. It has always been that way. That's how it was done last century. And looking backward is a sin because it does not progress with the church. Tradition instead, someone said, I think I, I, think I said it in one of the speeches, Tradition is the living faith of those who have died. Instead, for those people who are looking backward, who call themselves traditionalists, it is the dead faith of the living. Tradition is truly the root, the inspiration by which to go forward in the church. And this is always vertical. And looking backward is going backward. It is always closed. It is important to understand well the role of tradition, which is always open, like the roots of the tree. And the tree grows. A musician used a very beautiful phrase. Gustav Mahler used to say that tradition in this sense is the guarantee of the future. It is not a museum piece. If you conceive of tradition as closed, that is not tra Christian tradition. It is always the sap of the root that carries you forward, forward, forward. So for that reason, regarding what you are saying, thinking and carrying forward faith and morals, as long as it is going in the direction of the roots of the sap, that's okay. With these three rules of Vincent of Larens that I mentioned, end quote. Clearly, Francis doesn't much care for traditional Catholics. I'll go into that more in the coming days, I suspect. Things are moving very quickly right now in the church. And many people have commented on the absurdity of his statement. But remember that as I give you this unfortunate news, a source that I actually know, that I have spoken with on the phone, that I have, that whose identity I know who they are, and uh, and I trust them very much on this issue, but they have to remain anonymous for their own security, and if you knew who they were, you would know why. They provided me with some rather unfortunate news out of the Diocese of San Diego. Rome, perhaps at the direction of soon-to-be Cardinal McElroy, who is the Bishop of San Diego, has fully disbanded the order of women religious called the Trinitarians of Mary. They are a contemplative women's order dedicated to serving priests. They received a letter from Rome disbanding their order. You might be asking what their great crime was. Well, it's simple. They engage in perpetual adoration of the Eucharist, and they wear traditional habits. Those are their great crimes. They appear too traditional for apostate Rome. Here are some facts about the Trinitarians of Mary. They are not a traditionalist order of nuns. They actually had the Novus Ordo Mass offered for the most part in their chapels. Yes, they dabbled with the traditional Latin mass, but they were not traditionalists. That dabbling probably didn't exactly help their cause in a post-core orans and post-traditionis custodis world, but they are a Novus Ordo religious congregation. 
they're certainly traditionally minded, make no mistake about that. This comes from the order's website where their charism is described, quote, personal conversion. Our spirituality is emphasized by love, sought through a conversion of life, in the truth of self-knowledge with an unwavering confidence in the mercy of God. This attitude is part of the unique contribution we are called to make in the church today. The request for personal conversion is our way of living the radical gospel message. For us, it means a daily struggle to repent and change, to foster true sorrow for our sins, and to foment a firm purpose to amend our lives. We recognize that conversion is both a grace from God and an act of the will by which we pick up our cross and follow in the footsteps of Christ. A life of self-denial allows us to become the person that God created us to be. By it, we recuperate a childlike innocence and live in the joyful simplicity that comes from the freedom of a pure heart for the church and her priests. We are called to give our life of prayer and sacrifice in support of Catholic priests. As spiritual mothers, we accept every priest with unconditional love and seek to become channels of grace for their sanctification. We strive to make each of our monasteries an oasis of peace and a place of prayerful encounter with Jesus in the Eucharist. It is our hope that each priest who visits our monasteries be renewed in the joy of his vocation in the midst of a demanding ministry. Through perpetual Eucharistic adoration, our particular expression of the contemplative vocation is rooted in the practice of perpetual Eucharistic adoration. It is our way of continuing in the church, the presence and work of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We are called to love as she loved by immersing our minds and hearts in God in a continual act of adoration so that entire lives become an expression of the love of the Son for the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Taking her as our model, we seek to be vessels for the indwelling Trinity as we fix our gaze on the Eucharistic face of Christ. The personal prayer of each sister is marked by the hour she spends at the Lord's feet in solitary adoration before the Blessed Sacrament exposed. Jesus in the Eucharist is our pearl of great price, our hidden treasure, and the one thing necessary. He gives meaning to our consecration and Marian devotion. Mary is our sublime model of consecration to the Father, union with the Son, and openness to the Spirit. Because of the purity of her faith, the certainty of her hope, and the fullness of her love, her relationship with the Trinity shows us how to embrace our feminine identity and assume it in a spiritual way, the threefold role that she herself lives as daughter, spouse, and mother. Mary, the first and most faithful disciple of Christ, teaches us how to follow him with humility, simplicity, and joy. We desire to echo by a converted life her attitude of abandonment by which she surrendered to God's plan. We give a special place of honor in all our monasteries to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. We desire to bring about the triumph of her Immaculate Heart by seeking to make her known and loved by all who come in contact with us. We invite guests to our monasteries to participate in devotions that honor her, such as the Holy Rosary, processions, prayer vigils, and solemn celebrations of her feast days. End quote. If I had told you that they were dedicated to the Latin Mass and Preconciliar Sacraments and then read that to you and shown you pictures of the nuns and their habits, you'd have thought they were traditionalist nuns. And I'll amend what I said earlier. They might not be part of the traditionalist movement in the church, but they are certainly traditionally minded, too traditionally minded for apostate Rome. There are reasons I started this topic with Francis's words about traditionalists. There are a window into his thinking. Numerous women religious orders have been smashed to pieces by Rome because they engage in contemplative, prayerful activities. Back in February this year, Francis spoke to nuns and said some positive-sounding things about them and to them, but then framed his vision of what religious in the church should be like in purely materialistic terms. From the Washington Post article on this, and when Washington Post and outlets like them are reporting on happenings in the church, it's usually not a good thing. Quote, in a video posted to his official Twitter account on Tuesday, the pontiff asked people to pray for religious sisters and consecrated women and highlighted their service. What would the church be without religious sisters and consecrated laywomen, Francis said? The church cannot be understood without them. Speaking in Spanish, he prompted nuns to work to better the life of the poor and the marginalized and to fight back against, we'll say, chauvinism, especially within the church. I invite them to fight when, in some cases, they are treated unfairly, even within the church when they serve so much that they are reduced to servitude, at times by the men of the church, end quote. He's used a different phrase in the past when describing the work he wants done, go out and make a mess. We've heard him say that, and that's what he wants. He wants the nuns on the bus, not the Trinitarians of Mary. The Trinitarian sisters haven't gone public with this yet, 
If you were to go to their website and look, you'd find nothing about this move by Rome against them. Where it is from my trustworthy source is that they think that if they ask nicely for a reprieve, Rome will grant it to them. To the point where my source tells me that they're actually considering dropping the traditional habits they wear in favor of either the pantsuits that many religious orders wear or the modified pantsuits you see the nuns on the bus wearing. They will get no reprieve. At best, they'll be disbanded and the individual sisters reassigned to different orders that are more in keeping with Rome's attitude about prayer, which is that prayer doesn't really bear the fruits that the Synodal Church of the New Advent are looking for. They, meaning the Bergolians, want materialism. They, not, they don't want mysticism. They want the corporal works of mercy, but not the spiritual, and the two are inseparable. Remember that. For then the gospel is literally the caricature of what Protestants say the Catholic faith is. That's literally what they're doing. It's that works-based doctrine, that works-based gospel that I've warned you about before. And yet we are the ones that the hyper-papalists, that's what these people are, who say everything Francis does can't be wrong because he's the Pope. We are the ones the hyper-papalists will call Protestant because we reject and resist the new religion pushed by Rome, a new religion that seemingly is okay with pagan rituals that cause no shortage of scandal among the faithful. Keep the Trinitarians of Mary in your prayers. They'll need all the help they can get. But I'm curious what you think about this story, so let me know in the comments, please, and let me know what you think can be done for them. I'm not sure if they even accept donations for this kind of thing, and I'm not sure how much that would help, given if they've been disbanded. It, be it begs a lot of questions about their ability to access their order's resources. Well, let me know what you think can be done for them. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Share this on social media if you think it's a valuable message. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.